said Ripley. You said Ridley, and you've said it multiple times in this episode and the last. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not. I did not do that. I did oh, not Ridley. do that. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to another episode of I Finally Watched. I'm Alon. And this is David, and today I finally watched Aliens. See, instead of waiting a whole year to do the sequel, or seven years, like uh, James Cameron, to do the sequel, uh, we decided that it would be a good idea to do Aliens as our next episode after Ridley Scott's Alien. And watching them back to back, I think this was like a really good decision because having like the first film really fresh in our minds and then jumping into like the continuity of the second film and how many callbacks it it has to the first film, I think that just really helps like appreciate uh, the story more, appreciate the character more. Um, I... I said that in the last episode that Aliens is the better movie. And I'm not going to take it back, but watching them back to back, I think both of them have some really good qualities about them, some that the others don't have. But I do prefer a- this movie, Aliens, more. What, uh, what did you think, David? Depends on what you want. Um, you know, so Alien was supposed to be kind of like a an hors d'oeuvre going into spooky season. And then we basically just were like, yeah, you know what? Now we're just we're not doing horror anymore because this is not even remotely a horror movie. Like nothing really about it. Right. Um, except for, I guess, how disgusting the aliens are. But it's like kind of pure sci fi. Um, there's no jumps whatsoever to me um no scares and that's not i'm not saying anything bad um but it's just not it's not like a horror movie uh and alien was it's kind of interesting when i had heard about these movies people you know people that were talking about like yeah aliens it's okay right but then you get to aliens and that's when it like gets good and i'm watching these together i'm like alien is really good (laughs) <laughs> um yeah i don't i don't know what you guys were talking about like alien is i so just from right now having to make the decision i think i liked alien a little bit more um there's something specifically in the ending of aliens that i find laughably bad that really it, let's just talk about it now how does the queen alien know how to work an elevator <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I w- <laughs> I was thinking the same thing too. Um, th- there's something kind of comical about it, right? Because uh, she sees Ridley go up in in the one elevator, and then it's like this pan, like she like she's looking at the other elevator as it opens, just like you know whatever conveniently opens, and she was like, "Oh yeah, I'll just ride it up too," you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i get maybe it's just an automatic thing because i was also like when when ripley gets to the elevator i'm like why is it not there for you why are both elevators up how did you get down here and who are these other people taking elevators okay I, all right cool because i had the same thought too yeah yeah so it's, it's just sort of this contrived thing where i'm like why couldn't you just design the set to not have elevators because i and i guess the point of it was and this kind of shows how old the movie is a little bit, right? And like, and I'm I don't want to shit on it all time. It's an awesome movie. It's like very suspenseful, very well done. <laughs> but to end it on that, I'm just like, what the? And I think like they thought when they were doing like this is so awesome because Ripley's gonna get up there and see the elevator coming up, and she's gonna be like, "There's no way that that thing's coming up." And then of course it shows up. And yeah. the audience is going to be wondering, even though we showed the alien look at the elevator, and it's like, I don't know, I guess maybe as moviegoers we're more sophisticated now, or we've just seen this shit over and over again. <laughs> it was just like, there's no suspense. 
that alien's going to be on the elevator and it's going to make me mad. And that's what it did. <laughs> okay. So there's a couple of things that I thought of about this. It's like, is it the limitations of the CGI? Um, because I feel like if this movie was made today or close to today, you would have the alien physically crawling up the elevator shaft. And I would believe that a hundred percent. She would just destroy the elevator and then just use the shaft to climb up. Second thing I thought is that when the elevator was opening to reveal queen mother alien, um, I thought it was a misdirect. I thought the elevator was going to open. It was going to be empty. And then really Ridley and Newt are like, Whew, that was a close one. And then she's going to like come out of like left field, like, you know, or come up behind them. Um, But the way that it actually happened, the way that made you mad is actually the most disappointing way it could have played out. Um, I would love to see a scary if like there's a sci fi version of scary movie where like the elevator opens up and there's nothing there like. Oh, thank God. And then you pan over to the left and there's stairs and the alien climbs up, but then like puts its hands on its knees and is like, oh, hold on. <laughs> Isn't there something I've seen? I've seen a, oh my God, what is this from? It's like um, uh, the alien, it's a spoof on alien. The alien pops out of um, the guy's chest and then he starts doing the, Hello, my honey. Hello, my darling. Yes, yeah. Hello, my ragtime gal. Um, yeah, I but I can't yeah, remember what that's from. Yeah, I just, I don't, and I'm curious. I didn't have time to do the, like, the research on if anyone else had a problem with this as much as I did. <laughs> but, oh, it's Spaceballs. Oh, it's Spaceballs. Oh, I've never seen Spaceballs, so. So you've just seen the thing. But it was just. It, and I actually really like the rest of the ending a lot, even though it does get into that, like, well, what it makes Alien up did, for it, right? Yeah, like, right. It makes but, up for it. Yeah. But what Alien did where you're like, oh, it's it's still not ending. Like, it's it's kind of very Terminator like, right? Which Alien came out before Terminator and then Terminator came out before Aliens. But the just like you can't stop it. It keeps coming back. And like the alien in this one, like. It can't be stopped by the elevator. And then you climb onto the ship and you're like, well, it's clearly climbed onto the ship. And then like, you know, you want to hear something, something fun, something that I noticed. I know you have a different, uh, you watched a different version than me. You watched a version that was like 17 minutes longer. And I'm pretty sure it was 17 minutes longer in the beginning. So it doesn't have this effect towards the end of the movie for you. The exact amount of time that in the first alien where where Ripley gets into the escape pod, gets away from the blowing up ship and she makes it where we all know that the alien is somehow on board is 12 minutes from the movie ending, including the credits. Would you like to know the exact amount of time left over to when they leave the planet after it blows up? I mean, I guess 12 minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's the exact same like beat that it's like this is exactly how much time you need to like suspend your your disbelief that that alien is not following them. Um, but I thought the ending was so cool. But I don't want to talk about it right now because I w- I want to really deep dive into it. So let's jump all the way back to the beginning where, and I think the beginning is so strong in this too, where they find Ripley, um. And she's like cryo freeze. And and here's where I have a little bit of a problem, but it's fine. Um, is that she discovers that she's been cryo slap sleep cryo frozen. There we go. For for like 57 years, which is a huge shock to her system. But it's that information is given to her and it's given to us as the audience, but it's mixed with a dream sequence of her chest popping out a little alien. And then it's like, oh, she wakes up from it. And the guy she meets in her dream is there at her bedside table. But then it's like, um, but that all that information that was given within the dream is still true. It was just kind of confusing. 
Well, it's funny is I wrote in my notes after she woke up, I was like, I still think all that info was true. Like, I still think, but yeah, it is like, it is a little bit of a mind, but like, okay, so wait, how old, like in my version, I don't think you had this. Um, he comes in right afterwards. It's funny. It's like a lot of like working with the math to get it right. So she's been cryo frozen for 57 years. Um, Burke played by Paul Reiser um, comes in to like, she's in this, basically this area watching nature. And then it's like a screen similar to like, once again, sunshine stole from this, like it's the room that they go in. But um, he comes in, he's like, yeah, so we were able to find your daughter. Um, unfortunately, she died two years ago at the age of 66. Oh, and I didn't, then, I didn't uh, have that. Right. Yeah, you didn't. And then uh, what's actually funny is the person they show as her daughter is Sigourney Weaver's mother which is really cool. That is cool. Um, so they're like, yeah, she died at 66 two years ago. And Sigourney Weaver is like, I promised to her I would make it for her 10th birthday. And I was like, okay, let me do the math. 57. I was like, I guess that all works. No, I'm laughing because that reminds me of Interstellar where he's like, the latest outcome home is when you and I are the same age. <laughs> he stole it from this. Um, that's kind of disappointing that that I didn't have this version or that that version isn't the main version, the theatrical cut, I, I you would say, because there's this really strong theme through this whole movie about motherhood and the, like the relationship of a mother has with her children. And I feel like knowing that Ripley lost her kid in that time would have made me feel like like it was more important for her to look upon Newt as a daughter. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I am. Um, what's funny is when you, well, I, I found like this paragraph that kind of explains all the differences. Right. And so in the beginning, um, he, she talks about her daughter with Newt or with, uh, Paul Reiser, uh, finds out about it, uh, about, um, the fact that, uh, she's been killed or she's died. She was 66. Then she gets like uh, fired or court martialed. I don't really understand the way it works up here, but she's like, she's in like a boardroom, and they're basically like, "We don't believe you. There's no evidence of this alien." That's that's in my version. Okay, and then they but they like lower her rank. They um, they they demote her by the the board demotes her. So then she's like in her apartment and. At the same time, we go to the planet, which is like what LB forty or LB forty six, bullshit like that, yeah, yeah, four twenty, yeah, something like that. Anyway, four LB four twenty sixty nine, pog. Well, I think LB four twenty six is the name of like the the settlement. But anyway, um, they go there, and then uh, Newt is in a four wheeler, basically like an enclosed vehicle, like in Martian. Um, with her brother and her parents get out and go discover the aliens. And then the mom comes back and opens the door and the daughter starts screaming. And then you see the dad just on the ground with a face hugger on his face. Right. And then right after that, they go to Ripley and they're like, yeah, this whole place has been torn. Like we have no communication with them. We need to go. And they're like, you just got demoted. This will get you your job back. But it's like, it's weird because it's like the, and I guess maybe other alien movies do this. I didn't, I don't even think we got this with Prometheus, but like, it seems like this, this company runs the entire galaxy. So but you, then there's you, also the government too. Like it's confusing. So you get it really heavy with Prometheus. You get the name of the company. I don't know if you remember, but uh guy, what's his name? Guy Pierce. Okay. Is that the guy who played in Iron Man three? Yes. Okay. So Yeah. Guy Pierce is in this like um like they they must have spent nine hours putting this old man makeup on him. Right, um, right, right. And he's like the president of the company, and then um God I for is Charlize Theron in this movie? I don't Pro- remember Prometheus, Prometheus very well, as we discussed last time in Alien. Okay, okay, okay. Well, anyways, it that's like his daughter. Anyways, the 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 whole company is like this corrupt company. And you get the name of the company and, and everything is like laid out in front of you this time. But of course it is, right? Because like the whole twist of everything that happened in the first Alien and Aliens is from this company. So in Prometheus, they're like, yeah, we're just not going to hide how bad this company 
is. Uh, but but it's the same company. Now, um, uh, that's so interesting about how. So you the, so you saw the version that like Newt is with her brother and all that crap. Yeah, yeah. So that that obvious. So basically, in my version, it's she has that crazy dream. She wakes up. Burke is like, "Hey, uh, th- I'm gonna you know this is the rundown," and then they're in the board meeting, and then. Burke goes to her room and is like, hey, we lost communication with the thing and you need to go back for the thing. That's it. There was no newt. There was no demoting of rank. There was nothing like that. Um, what I found interesting is that my version that that excludes all of that, I don't think you need that. I think it's cooler to like not know that going into it. Uh, well, I disagree, seeing as how I have my reality that I was in. I like all the setup and I was kind of like, it, I, when I was watching, I was like, "Is this really necessary?" But you're, it. I think it really puts you in the place and gives you like a lot of background, right? And sort of elevates it from just like a normal action movie, which a lot of like James Cameron movies are elevated from what could just be like a normal action movie. What was interesting to me though was just like how long that exposition was, because this is a ton of exposition to then get to the action movie. So it's twenty six minutes on the planet. Um, and then you get to the next planet, the LB40, and it's probably like 20 minutes there of exposition until we're now like in the shit. And like, I think the attack happens like after an hour. So there's like an hour and 20 minutes left when there's the attack on all the Marines. So it's like so much setup for the action movie part of it. Um, but I, like I said, it establishes kind of the, the mind space that, uh, to use, mind space is a term you use all the time. But just to, to establish like what Ripley's feeling, her thoughts, she just lost her daughter, um, to establish like her motivation on this mission that she got demoted and she goes off on this board and she's like, listen, uh, she finds out that they, they've terraformed yeah, I know. the, <laughs> the, uh, the LB 40, which is awesome because it's like, then it's, it's, that's just a practical thing of like James Cameron's like, I don't want them in spacesuits this whole movie. Like clicking in and out of the helmets every time they go in she's like he's just like terraformed now we can just walk around so so uh after watching aliens i didn't really have anything better to do so i started watching alien 3 and uh i only got like 20 minutes in because then i started hating it but uh your understanding of ripley's psychosis between all three movies where she becomes more and more paranoid i don't know if you call it paranoia but but she becomes more careful at the fact that this is all happening so in the first one she's completely unaware right she she doesn't know anything about aliens or what they can do or anything and the second one she's trying to tell everyone like don't let them touch your fucking face. Don't do this. Don't do that. Make sure it's burned. Make sure this. Make sure that. It's weak to this. Like, she's laying out everything for them, and they're just, like, not listening to her. Like, that boardroom meeting is so frustrating to hear because she's like, you, you there's aliens there, and you just, like, fucking sent 90 families over there. And um, what's really funny is that Burke, and you know Burke is a piece of shit when this happens, when they get to the planet and she sees that they've been experimenting on the aliens. It's right after Burke is like, aliens? What aliens? There's no aliens. It's like that motherfucker knew what was happening the entire time. It makes you wonder if everyone else in that boardroom, I mean, they have to, right? Like everyone else in that boardroom meeting has to know that they were aliens and they've been experimenting on them. Um but then it's like confirmed at like the son of a bitch Burke is when he's like, no, these she's like, we got to destroy these two remaining live ones. And he's like, that's like millions of dollars worth of like profit. We can't do that. Um, And then and then we know and then we know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think once again, this is like watching this movie, you know, over 35 years after it came out you can kind of, you know how movies work. And so watching this back then, I like, I was like, okay, Riser is most likely the bad guy and they're definitely going to pivot. 
from the uh you know she's gonna be hesitant around the robot but he's gonna be fine um so like it's it's a little bit like oh the the mystique is gone of like you kind of know what's happening but um I, de- I definitely like like the choices in this movie uh that were made um one thing so she decides to go she gets on the she gets on the ship the next thing for you i think is them waking up from cryo sleep but in the version i watched they basically do this kind of meandering shot around the ship that opened alien they do it in aliens right Right. And so I was kind of like, all right, this is like the start of the movie, basically. Like you take out those 26 minutes and it's like almost the same length, you know, give or take 10 minutes as the original. And so they do this where they're going around the ship, just the camera, and then you get to the cryo and they wake up. And what I thought was funny, because we just watched Alien and I brought up how people didn't like how skimpy the the women were dressed and you know, specifically the last scene with Sigourney Weaver, a big uh, person who was mad about that was James Cameron. And so now... They're wearing like the women are wearing like full shirts. I wondered. I wondered about that. Yeah. Um, which is like, I don't know. It's if it's necessary for them to be like not really clothed, and then you put on this full thing just for that. Like, I mean, I get. I, I'm always looking at a movie and like, hey, if you know the sex scenes or the the nudity is probably like not necessary, but in this, just her wearing something pretty small because of like the the science around cryo or that's how movies present it just like it's not he basically put like a burlap sack on top of them and it was like nothing we're showing nothing in this well i mean i she was wearing panties though wasn't she like i thought they were in pants i don't know i didn't see that part i think they were wearing they were pretty well clothed when they got out they were more clothed than uh than the first one for sure i noticed that too but i think it was still and you you have to remember it was Sigourney Weaver's idea to just be like butt ass naked for the for the last half of it. So it's like she uh like whatever. I mean, maybe James Cameron is a little bit more of a convincing director. He's like, "No, you're going to shave and you're going to wear this shirt." Okay, Sigourney? <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. Um we see all the rest of the people. Um we like we meet all of these guys. Obviously Bill Paxton steals the show. Oh, um so good but but drake from uh who is from shawshank one of the sisters i was like you're gonna die and i'm glad about it <laughs> yeah but he's so good friends with vasquez it's like that that like that camaraderie i thought they were gonna play more into that um and also i i feel like and i think i'm just thinking of a different movie here but i thought vasquez dies a different way but she, she dies the way she dies um yeah and everyone is so oh there was this one line where um oh bill paxton says to vasquez he goes does anyone ever mistaken you for a man and then without missing a beat she goes no does anyone (laughs) mistaken you yeah uh yeah and uh, that's great it's great Did you recognize who uh vasquez was uh no I guess not. So she is Jeanette Goldstein, and the only other thing that I've seen her in is she plays John Connor's stepmother in T2. She does play John Connor. Wow, what a different character. Yeah, but when you go through James Cameron's movies, and I, this is a lot of directors, but he loves working with the same people, so you see Bill Paxton in a ton of shit. Yeah. You see um, like all these different people, so Sigourney Weaver ending up in Avatar. Um also with bill paxton hardly had a a role in terminator and so to give him a bigger one in that he's such a great actor that i'm 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 surprised he wasn't more of the leading man more often in things right oh and then also michael bean who comes from terminator right he apparently took on the role like after principal photography started because and you can look up who this guy is because you're not going to remember him off the top of your head but james raymar um got kicked off the movie for like i think alcoholism um drinking too much okay or maybe possibly drugs but anyway they had someone else doing that role and then he just was like oh you know i got this guy who can do this and obviously it's like one of michael bean's two iconic roles that you think of when you think of him 
Well, hold on. Um, I'm just... having trouble think of who Michael Bean is. Which character does he play? He's Hicks. Oh, he's Hicks. Okay. And then he is the he is John Connor's fucking father, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Which is one of the biggest, um, like, uh, going in the past loophole mindfuck like uh yeah. paradoxes in the history yeah. of movies but yeah he's like i'm gonna send you to save me but you're also gonna create me so there you, you can go be my daddy yeah yeah it's a bit weird um i also in this paxton also makes a joke like an illegal alien joke to vasquez and i was like are we still that's still an issue in whatever year this is <laughs> So, you know what I really like about these, and it goes for the first one, too, is that you really like these characters uh, as, like, you, you get to know these characters, and it, there's, it's sad when they die, but they're flawed enough that you're like, yeah, okay, <laughs> <It's>, they're dead, <laughs> let's move on. Like, at the end of it, you only really care about Ripley, all said and done, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, well, but also when you're when you've seen alien and then you go into this, you're like, I mean the kid in Ripley, that's who's going to basically live. And I think we also get like Michael Bean, you know, um, thrown in there this time. Um, I guess I'll have to wait for alien three to see if he really made it. Uh, <laughs> he's alive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want me to tell you? Cause I kind of want to tell you, <laughs> I think it'll be more interesting if you know this actually. What, that he's not in the third one? I mean, do you want to know? Not really. No, okay. I mean, we're going to do it next year, so no. I mean, I'll find out eventually. Okay. Um, the other thing, so we get this, like, basically them getting ready to go onto the planet, and Sigourney Weaver's like, oh, you know, I uh, I can you know, operate one of those lifter things. And I was like, that's just the fucking thing in Avatar. He just stole that from this and then put it in Avatar. That's the exact same fucking thing. You can't steal something he created, man. You can plagiarize yourself. It's a thing. It's plagiarism, man. It's plagiarism. Yeah, so that that suit, which also plays a heavily into the ending of this movie, and I did yeah. enjoy, um, I was like, that is totally, he just took this for Avatar. It looks exactly the same. So what's interesting is, you know, they're setting up the ending at this point in the movie. They're setting up the ending to to show that she can operate this thing. And I think it's more powerful that way. I mean, does it, did it, I knew it was coming because I've seen this movie before. But did you, uh, do you think it would have been the same or less powerful if they didn't have this scene where showing her how to operate it? And then at the end, she just fucking comes out with this thing on so i didn't i didn't put two and two together that she was going to need to use that in the end because i was like that's not going to be very effective um but then obviously you get the queen alien i I mean i think they one you need to have it because if you just have her operating this thing in the end you're like what the fuck she doesn't know how to work that thing um so you need to establish that she can so it's believable um but two like yeah when they show her using it and then the michael bean and the sarge are laughing i'm just like oh they're just you know that's just some camaraderie bullshit put in there to to make them like her you know that's that's what that's for so it didn't oh, james it, cameron yeah i think it needed to be in there um and it didn't ruin the ending for me i think it i think it was necessary so no i think it's necessary too i did notice in the scene the way the sarge like chews the shit out of his cigars like it's almost like he's not smoking and just like just gnawing on that thing i didn't notice that but (laughs) i'm sure um so they land on the planet it's terraformed as we said and they're just kind of making their way in at first it looks like nothing's wrong until they like make it into the main area and you just see like the acid holes and like they can't find like a single person right And also they're like, they're like, tell uh, the commander, like, okay, it's secure. And Ripley's like, no, it's not. And then he's like, I said it's secure. And then just like make her go out there. I I love the way they established that Commander Gorman's just like the fucking worst at his job. And that's especially established when they're dropping in and they're like, oh, how many live drops have you done? And he's like, oh, like 18. And she, he's like, well, how about how, how many on like real missions? And he's like, two. 
including this yeah, one, and then you know they're fucked. <laughs> yeah, the rest of them are like, oh, holy shit. I, um, the dropping in scene obviously reminds me a little bit of, um, Live, Die, Repeat, Edge of Tomorrow. Where they're all, like, talking shit to each other as they're dropping in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, you already talked about how they find the face huggers and two of them are alive and they, what, you get, like, some notes in the computer that they killed one of the guys taking it off, like, extracting it. So Bishop, Bishop does this, right? He reads the notes and, and, and comes up to this. And at this point, I'm suspicious of Bishop because the actor just plays an AI really, really well. I read somewhere that James Cameron was going to have him have um, special contacts. So he has like double pupils to just like really make him look, you know, weird. And then uh, he was like, nah, <laughs> the actor plays this so creepily that he doesn't even need anything more to make him more creepy. And I was like, yeah. I I also read the actor said that, um, you know, the scene where he does the knife, it was like, I think it was his idea to put Bill Paxton's underneath. And then they do, they do it. And he goes out and gets drunk that night. And then the next day they're like, Oh, we need to reshoot it. And then he nipped Paxton's finger (laughs) doing it that time. Oh, really? I heard that. I heard that they did not tell Bill Paxton that he, he, they were going to take his hand and do it, and they did it. So his rea- his scream is like a genuine scream. I mean, yeah, that part probably could be too. I mean, they could cut it, but yeah, I just uh, like that part is it's it's also it's like it's moving very fast. I imagine it had to be sped up like in post to make it go that fast because it just when he does it, you're immediately like, okay, that's a robot. And then for the people who didn't get it, they show him like you know, having the milky stuff coming out of his finger and then fucking Sigourney Weaver freaks out about it because she has not had a good experience with these guys. No shit. No shit. Did you, I guess, when did you see this for the first time? Yeah. I think I saw Aliens before I even saw Alien. But like when you were a kid? Yeah. I, um, like I said, like, you know, having watched tons of movies now, when they have something coming straight at them on the radar, which obviously noticed the radar had gotten a lot better in 57 years, but really only seven years. Um, I'm like, that's a false alarm for sure. And then they just almost completely decimate a little girl, which is the (laughs) little girl that if you saw the cut I did, you've already met. But (laughs) if not, then this is your first time seeing her. See, that's why I think it would be cooler if you if you don't see her. Right, because then you're like, what is she? What is that? And then the reveal that there's a little girl on this thing alone, I think is, I think that I think it's cooler. But I mean, like you said, you live in a different reality currently than I do, so that's fine. Well, when I saw her, I was like, yeah, of course she's not going to hire two girls for these parts. Like we're going to have our like if he's going to shoot both, this is the one we already met. Um, <laughs> the way that the lead guy Gorman is like talking to the little girl and Sigourney Weaver's like, you're fucking horrible at this. Can you just leave? <laughs> she crawls in that like little crawl space. That's the hardest part to believe about this whole movie is that she hasn't been found out for like, what, a month? Um, in this like crawl space that's not that hidden, but like I guess the aliens just don't bother with like that side of the ship any or that side of the facility anymore. So whatever. Yeah. I um at, at this point too, um Bishop's kind of steadying the face huggers a little bit and he's he calls the uh the aliens magnificent and I think that's supposed to be like the red herring of like okay he might be as bad as Ash was. Right. Um I didn't fall for it. I didn't believe it. I uh, thought it was... Oh, you didn't, huh? Well, I mean, there's one of two ways this goes, right? Like, there has to be a bad guy other than the aliens. And it's either going to be Bishop or Burke, Paul Reiser's character. Um, And so, yeah, it could have gone either way. I was just banking on the zag over just going the same way that it did last time. It's a real big zag, especially if you have, like, no idea it's coming because... Burke is played as this like almost like only like like uh the only friendly face for Ripley right like she he's the only one that like is like okay I believe you I can go with this on you you know like and then to like 
make them as bad as they actually did, I thought was great. Like locking them out of like those doors and stuff. I was like, oh, too good. Yeah, and also it's like I don't I have a different relationship going into this with Paul Reiser now than someone who saw this earlier. I don't know, because this was like one of the first things he did, right? But he also just looks like kind of a a nice guy. Um, but having seen like Mad About You and then now he's like a good scientist in Stranger Things, um it's like it's definitely he is like perfectly cast to be unassumingly evil. Oh my god, um, that's the same guy. Oh my god. He oh my god. It's Paul fucking Riser. What do you mean it's the same guy? It is, isn't it? He's from Stranger Things. Isn't he also in The Boys? I think so, yeah. Huh. Potentially. Yeah, he's pretty good. So, um, yeah, so we, we get to them finding Newt, and... We already found Newt a while ago. I know, but Ridley brings her to the ship. Um, her name's Ripley. I said Ripley. You said Ridley, and you've said it multiple times in this episode and the last. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah. No, I did not. I did not do that. I did oh, not do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. I think people know. I fucking know it's Ripley. Okay. I'm not even going to about L. it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well... Ripley brings new to the ship and um I I love like Newt isn't given a lot but the little bit and the little lines that she is given I feel like she she just takes over the scene like where she's like affirmative like that's like I'm like okay oh and then one was when uh when Ripley is like yeah, she's trying to convince uh, Paxton to do his job, and he's like, "No, this this is too much." You know, I'm trying to, I'm going to retire in four weeks, and she's like, "Hey, this little girl survived by herself," and then she just gives a salute to Bill Paxton. Oh, my favorite one is when she's trying to make new dream, and she's like the doll, the the doll head Casey. She's like, Casey, uh, has, is full of good dreams, and 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 new is like Ripley. Casey's a piece of plastic. Yeah, no, she is. She is great in this. Like, I don't. Not maybe her. Her overall acting skills are fine, but her like her comedic delivery. She is the comic relief in the movie, and so to make the little girl the comic relief, like you have to be really good at it. And she's great. I feel um, like Paxton point, is is also a huge comic relief character. I think Newt's better. I mean, I didn't say he was better. I just thought I think he's supposed to be the so sad when he dies. Um, by the way, I was like, I was sure he was one of the last ones to live, but no. Game over, man. Um, the point in which we are now is when they find the trackers and all the colonists are in this one area way over on the other side. I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> they're absolutely not. This is, this is what we call a trap. <laughs> uh, although, as you pointed out to me before recording, it's not like a purposeful trap. It's just like, but they are going into, like, basically a hive, I guess. Yeah, as we find out exactly... these, these things act like bugs. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's like a hive where they bring all the bodies and start incubating them and mating with them or whatever the fuck they do with them. But um, the this has been going on for quite some time, right? So one has to assume that there's going to be a ton of these when they get there. And, and, you know, Ripley stays back in the ship with Newt and just watches from the comms. So like all the soldiers basically going in there to die. Yeah. And it's, it's set up like horribly for them. Well, first of all, they walk through this and it looks like an alien ship. Like it just looks like an alien lair. Um, so they get in there. Uh, and then they're like, oh, we're under a nuclear reactor, so you can't use your guns. And Gorman, being the horrible commander he is, is like, hey, no guns, but won't explain to them why. Um, it's just like, yeah, no guns. Quit asking questions. Shut up. You know, but that, that never that never comes into place, right? Like, it's not like Vasquez keeps her gun, which she does, shoots it off, which she does. 
but it doesn't hit anything. It doesn't cause anything to blow up. It's just basically an explanation as to why the facility and and therefore the planet can blow up like 30 megaton nukes, but it doesn't play into it right then and there. It maybe doesn't play into it right then and there, but we later on when they're like, they look at the emergency vent that Bishop shows them and he's like, you know, there's shit coming out of it. And he's like, we have four hours. I do wonder if maybe one of the guns like nicked the reactor or something. And that is what's going to cause this explosion. Nah, but that's never explained to us. It's not, but it would be an explanation instead of just like, once again, as the last movie, just like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, along with all the other bad things that are happening, uh, the planet's going to blow up for some reason. That is <laughs> unexplained. That's basically what happens, though. So anyways, they, they go in there, and it's like that scene in, uh, what is it, Jurassic World, the first one, where it's like you see the, the soldiers going in there, and then their comms go red one by one, right? Um, so their yep. cameras go out and their life support dies and they're just getting picked off by the titular characters, aliens. Uh, yeah, and this scene, this scene is so cool with you seeing all of them, right? Like just looking up and just they're crawling all it's, it's, there's just so many of them, right? And there's probably only like four or five, but it just looks like so many of them. And just like, these dudes are fucked. One thing I will say is, the woman who's still alive in the cocoon and then the alien pops out of her almost looked like Lambert a little bit. And I was like, obviously I know it wasn't her, but I was like, oh yeah, it's kind of like an approximation almost. Actually, I was just about to ask you, is that Newt's mom? Because I didn't see her, but you did. Uh, she wasn't very memorable to me. She was in it for like half a second. So it might have been. It pro I mean, to save money, it probably was. Meh. You know, and then and then Ripley's like, get Newt out of here. Or like, Newt, sit over there or whatever. Um, Yeah. Did you? Yeah. I, I was just like, just burn it. Just burn the body. And then, ugh, man, and then the little thing pops out. I was like, burn that too. Like, um, But then once they start attacking the hive nest thing, then that's when all hell breaks loose and the aliens come out. And I, I am so glad that they explained the, I love this, right? When she's in the boardroom meeting and she's like, they have acid for blood. And then the guy's like, yeah, sure they do. They have acid for blood. And then the, they utilize that and they show like every time you shoot the alien and the blood spurs out, it lands on someone and they're burning and they're in pain. And Burke turns to Ripley and goes like acid for blood, huh? Like, that's what you're talking about, huh? It's like, you asshole. Yeah, no, exactly. I did notice um, every black guy died in this scene. Just Is all it... of them. I mean, wrong that's just place, a horror trope right time. there, right? Just a horror, just a playing right into the horror trope. Um, Not alien though, and then, because they saved that dude for one of the last ones. Who? Uh, what's his name? Park Park. Oh, Parker Park. in, Parker? The, in the first one. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, one of the last ones. Um, and then I like the they call for the plane to come pick them up, and the guy like comes in and like touches the sticky stuff. It's like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's like, what's what's this? And he's like, never mind about that. Let's go 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 to get these guys. Although we didn't even talk about freaking Sigourney Weaver's driving skills as like Gorman's trying to stop her and he just, she just shakes him off. And then this is like one of the moments where you're like, oh, is Burke a bad guy or a good guy? Because Burke comes in, he's like, hey, you had your chance and like pulls him off of Sigourney Weaver so that she can go save these guys. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're throwing Burke's motivations all over the place. Just I feel like just for the purpose of throwing us off. But we know. I think his, I think his triangle of like needs is like survival and then money. Like that's what. So it's first to live, and so that's why he's like Sigourney Weaver gives me a better chance to live than your dumbass. And then after that, it's like, let's save the aliens for money. Those are the two things that motivate him. Well, it's interesting too, right? Because you're not dealing with an AI, and like Ash in the first one, he he was very. Um, he only has one goal and he will do anything to pursue that one goal. But Burke is a human. So 
Burke has many, you know, interests and emotions and stuff. So that fluctuation of the character seems more true to like how an actual human being would react, which I think is great. I love him as a villain. Um, so yeah, we get, we, the, she crashes in that like Elon Musk looking car, uh, crashes into the, to the thing and saves almost all of the remaining troops. I think, uh, what Hicks Hicks doesn't die, but becomes unconscious. And then no Hicks is fine. Um, Drake dies and Hudson burns his arm, right? Bill Paxton burns his arm. Correct. Yeah. Um, what I like after this is the scene where they, you know, the ship gets destroyed. That's coming to get them. And the little girl's like, Hey, we need to hide. Cause, uh, they, uh, they mostly come at night and you're like, Holy shit. This is also the game over man scene. When, uh, when, the the rescue ship crashes. Yeah. Right. Right. And I love, he's like, Game over, man. And then uh, Paul Reiser comes in. He's like, let's build a fire and sing songs. Just like, shut the fuck up, dude. Like, we got to, you know, we got to do something. I am. Um, I also right before this, the scene where uh, um, Ripley is like, hey, we need to just nuke this fucking planet. And Burke's like, no, hold on a second. Like, this is an important species. Who says it's our right to do that? And I wanted Ripley to just immediately be like, whoa, whoa, whoa because you said that's what we we're going to do when you got me to come here was like, we're coming to kill them, not to save them. Right. So like, what's, what's up with that? Um, but then she's like, well, Hicks is in charge and Hicks is like, yeah, let's fucking nuke this place. Why not? Yeah. I, I love how excited Bill Paxton gets about it. Cause, cause she's like, yeah, I say we just nuke this place. And Bill Paxton's like, yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love his like in fluctuations and it's just his whole the way he talks through this whole movie is just so great. It makes him like a real standout character, you know? Oh yeah, absolutely. He like I said, him right below the little girl. <laughs> um So they get back in and sort of like close all the, the doors and everything. They figure out where these aliens could come through and they set up these like sentries with a very limited amount of bullets in the grand scheme of things. Um, and they're going to have to wait out like 17 days at this point is what they think. They're like, okay, we're just going to wait this out. Um, and th- I think they realized very quickly that that is not going to work because like, I love when like the aliens come in and the thing is, is like this movie doesn't describe that the aliens are like super intelligent but they basically like just have a bunch of aliens attack this one area and then take out all of its bullets. You know what I mean? Like, and maybe that's not purposeful, but like there's just sort of like checking the vulnerabilities to get at these people. You know, there's a, a, a line in this movie where I think someone's, I think it's Bishop says they cut the power to, you know, so-and-so. And one of the soldiers is like, they cut the power. How do they know how to do that? They're just animals. So I think that is showing like how unprepared they think um, or how prepared, how un- underprepared they are for the intelligence of these animals, but, or these aliens, but in reality, they're super intelligent. I think that line really says it like they cut the power. They did this. And then for them to be like, they're just animals. They're just like dumb animals. It's like, no. They're so much smarter than you. Um, and then that's even more highlighted when they get tricked by the the um, motion detectors. And they're like, oh, there's like a shit ton of them. And they're like six meters away from us. And they're like, but that should be like right literally in front of our faces. And that's when Ripley's like, oh, shit, they're in the ceiling. Well, and the whole time that's happening too, the little girl's like, "We need to get out of here," because she understands that they like that they could be anywhere. Um, that is also like probably one of the coolest shots as uh, Hicks, Michael Bean sticks his head in the roof, and you just see them all crawling and coming in. Like that is like the the aliens in this movie look so great 
compared yes. to when you get like the full shots of the alien in the last one. Yes. Um, before we get to that part though, I there's like a little bit of like a Hicks and Ripley like start to fall for each other, which Romance? is very quick. Yeah. Um, he gives her this tracker, right? And she then a scene later gives it to the little girl, which is funny because like it's never exp- she never like sh- tells Michael Bean that she's never like oh I did this, but then in the end he's like yeah. she falls down, he's like he's like don't worry she's the tracker. Exactly. I was wondering the same thing. I was like, wait, is like isn't the last thing he knows that he gave her the tracker? Why does he automatically assume that Newt now has the tracker on her? Right. So I thought the same thing, but I guess that was in a whatever. Maybe he like looked at her wrist and then saw it was on her sort of thing. Maybe this was his way of like telling her like, yeah, I saw that you gave my freaking present away. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like this whole I love I love how these like um, romance scenes work when it's not like based around like a a wooing of of a woman or a man. So this whole this whole romance unfolds as he's showing her how to use this gun. And I I love it. I love that scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. It's like, yeah, and you put the bullets here and this is the grenade launcher. And she's like, wow, look at this. And he's like, yeah, look at you. And uh, she's like, yeah, I can take care of myself. And he's like, yeah, I bet you can. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Are we in an oven? The heat's up in here, man. So He's like, I have to take care of myself all the time. I'm kind of lonely. <laughs> um now we 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 didn't talk about a, a, a big scene here and and, and uh, we're almost at the where uh, basically the aliens kill everyone else but there's this also awesome scene and i was really feeling like we were missing a face hugger moment in alien and this brought it all back um but we're not there yet yeah we got we gotta we gotta be there we gotta be like right well, there we're close Mm. We're close mm. because you're forgetting the Burke, the scene where we find out that Burke is evil, right? Because he sent the colonists out to the ship. Did you not have this scene? No. What? Sigourney Weaver basically goes up, to, goes to Burke, and she's like, "I found a transmission in the computer that you sent the colonists out oh, to no, go I, I to had the aliens." Scene. I had this, and scene. he's like, "You started all of this," and he's like, "Well, yeah, we." If we bring back an alien alive, it's worth like millions. And she, and he's she's like, well, you won't get through one, one through the customs. customs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and this is like this is a common misstep in sci-fi horror movies, and it's a common misstep in movies that, in general. But it's a common misstep that Ripley has made because she keeps telling people her plans, and these people are bad people, and she knows they're bad people. And she tells them, and then they, like, try and kill her, right? She did this with Ash instead of just being like, okay, that's cool, Ash, and, like, walking away. Like, she, he almost murders her. <laughs> and then the, she tells she tells Burke, I'm going to make you go to jail. And so then, yeah, Burke obviously tries to kill her. Before we do get to that, um, we do get the whole thing about, oh, there's probably a queen alien, like a queen bee. Um, and I was like, oh, well, then there definitely has to be because they said it in the movie. So that's obviously going to come in a little bit right 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 right. um okay so now we're at that at the medic bay because after she threatens burke close we're close okay because there's the other sentry guns we talked about the first sentry guns but there's the other ones where they're using up all the bullets and then michael bean's about to go out there and ripley's like wait look they stopped and so she's like okay the aliens and this is once again establishes how smart they are because she's like okay, the aliens aren't going to go this way anymore. They're going to look for another way because they think, okay, this way is death, similar to the other one. And then she says to Michael Bean, she's like, if I'm about to become a cocoon, you need to fucking kill me. And he's like, I'll kill both of us. I'll do us both in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is also where Bishop like crawls through the little pipe, yes, right? That's yeah. what I was going to say. They send Bishop to, uh, which is like another, uh, you know, they had Drake from Shawshank, and then this is another like uh, Andy Dufresne through a, uh, you know, 400 yards of poo-poo. <laughs> yeah, but there's no poo-poo in this one. There's just, like, certain death. Um, yeah, when he crawls through that, I'm like, okay, now I'm totally on Bishop's side. Because he's, like, he's, like, a good AI. He's, like, you know what? I'll do the... Oh, one of my other favorite lines of this movie. 
there's there's so many great lines in this movie this movie is so well written like overall but the one-liners of this movie is are awesome bishop goes i might be synthetic but i'm not stupid yeah really good so good um so he crawls through the thing to like turn the satellites over so he can call a rescue ship in sooner than the 17 days that they have to stay alive against these things which at this rate they are not going to do. They are doing a horrible job at that. Um, and well, now... And this is also, well, also because um, Bishop has already said, like, oh, we actually only have, like, four hours. And then when they put him in the tube, he like he's like, all right, well, it's going to take me this long to get there, and then this long to do this, and this long to do that. And it's basically, like, three hours of the four hours they have left it's going to take him to go through there. Um, and like get it fixed up so that they can then call down the ship and like leave. Yeah, um, cut in close, man. And now he is. And now we get to Burke. And now we get to, to Burke. Kill Ripley. Now we get to <laughs> we get to Newt and Ripley sleeping in the med lab. And you get this really cute little scene that's just more reinforcing on the theme of mother and daughter relationships through this film. And. This is this is right after she's taught to use the gun. So she has the gun in her possession. She lays it down on the on the bed when she notices Newt prefers to to sleep under the bed because from what I take it, she's used to sleeping on like the cold hard ground because she's been doing it for so long. Um and Ripley kind of crawls in there with her and she's woken up by something, right? Like a clatter or something. And Oh, it's the jar. It's the jar of the of the thing breaking. She looks at it and she kind of like it all clicks together for her. She's like, oh, this the face hugger is loose in the lab. So the first thing she does is she goes and she grabs her, her gun, which is not there. And they are also on top of her not having her weapon with her. Um, they're also trapped in the med lab with not one, but two face huggers. So nothing is going right. Yep. And then there's a pretty cool scene where they avoid it. It's about to get on her face and Michael Bean comes in just right time. She like lights the lighter to get the, you know, because um, the cameras are turned off by Paul Reiser. So she lights the lighter to get the, the sirens going. And when they get over there and Michael Bean's like a little hesitant, like, are you sure that this guy is the one that did it? I just love that Bill Paxton at this point is like, whatever Ripley says goes like, he <laughs> was like, let's like, fry him. Yeah. yeah. I, so, and in this scene, they're like about to kill him. And Ripley's like, no, don't kill him. And then the lights turn off and they're like, oh, they cut the power. Right. I would love for in a movie like this, for the thing to save the bad guy, for him to then be able to do something else bad. They're like, oh, we can't shoot him right now. I would love for them. Like, oh, the power went out. Okay. Oh, wait a second. And then, like, shoot him in the head and, like, all right, now let's go solve this other situation. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and just that whole thing where the facehuggers are attacking uh, Ripley and Newt, and there's this one move that, like, Ripley's occupied with, like, not making sure the facehugger doesn't hug her face. The other one co- goes after Newt, and Newt does this super smart thing where she slams the little table against the wall to like trap the tail uh, between the table and the wall. And so she's holding it there. And then Paxton walks in, Hicks walks in um, and Vasquez and and Hicks goes to help uh, Ripley. And then uh, Hudson is like, Oh shit. Like, let me, let me help the little girl battling this alien. And he does, like, a horrible job shooting that thing. He has to, like, use all of his bullets. And then when Vasquez does it, she just, like, very quickly gets rid of it. Um. So then now they're all like, yeah, this son of a, bu- son of a bitch did it. And, um, yeah, I, I would have liked to just see him die right then and there. But, you know, I, I it's a hero's code, right? Ripley can't be like, yeah, let's off the guy. Yeah, they um, this next scene is really cool. It kind of starts basically the action for the rest of the movie, right? They like lock themselves in and actually like, you know, they melt the doors together, like locking it so that they, you know, the aliens can't get in. And then you're like, oh, shit, where are they? And we get the cool scene where Michael Bean looks up and they're all on the ceilings. And then 
Paxton basically dies a hero, right? And Gorman just lets Paul Reiser go, who immediately locks them out of like their escape. Which yeah. I do love the uh, the whole like the trope of like oh the bad guy is getting away, but no, actually he ends up dying. And if they had all gone that way, they would have died. Um, <laughs> just oh, as soon as he goes to that one door, you're like oh, there's an alien behind that door. Like very clearly, there's an alien. Especially the way it's shot and everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 Later on, you know, when Newt is captured and they're like, oh, they don't kill people. She has to be still alive. I thought to myself, I was like, you know what? Technically, we never saw Bill Paxton die. So it's like, couldn't. I I was holding out hope. I was like, when she goes to save Newt, there's going to be Bill and she's going to save both of them. And they're going to both walk out of there. And that's just not at all what happens. It's not, unfortunately. I think we assume him and riser and then uh i do like gorman getting a little bit of like a uh you know a, a retribution right he goes back to save vasquez and then just ends up blowing both of them up because he can't he can't kill the aliens fast enough yeah there's like so many of them it's definitely it's, the plural is warranted for this movie <laughs> it's so cool man it's so cool and um i love how ripley is just blindly following newt through these uh vents and corridors and Newt's like, yeah, this way. This way's a shortcut. And I was like, it wouldn't make sense to like make her being like full of shit, right? Like it wouldn't make sense, but it it really is putting all your faith in 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 knowing in thinking that she knows where she's going, right? Yeah, but I mean, you've established that she she survived by herself for a kind of a long time. In I'm just saying, it just seems super convenient that she knows where she's going. Um, and then she falls down the little thing. Personally, the, one of at, my favorite shots of the movie. Go ahead. Well, I, it is cool, but I will say, like at this movie, I, at this point in the movie, I was like, "This is just turned into like a comedy of errors." You know what I mean? It's like, and it kept going after that, where oh, there was an ex- like a little bit of an explosion. Show she falls, and then she falls down basically this slide into water. And then they can't get her in time, so the aliens take her off. And then, you know, then that leads to the ending that's, with the elevator. Right. Well, that's one of my complaints is that Ripley grabs her jacket sleeve and she slips out of her jacket sleeve. I'm I'm sorry, but if you're slipping out of your jacket sleeve, can't you just grab the inside of your jacket and hold on to it? Like, why are you going to be like, oh, nope, I made out of butter. I guess I'm just going to wee down the slide she's a little she's a little kid alon that's why i grab your freaking jacket do you want to die i don't know um and then they get out right uh michael bean gets hit with some acid and is basically like limping really badly even though he got the acid on his chest so he's uh he's out and we get the ripley is now a badass scene where she fucking duct tapes two guns together and uh just gets, gets her all these, it's like, like grenades and shit yeah it's the commando scene it's like the getting your guns like weapons together commando i think is done at the best ever right um but yeah this is this is awesome and we have what 14 minutes to reach safety once she gets down there so real um, quick though because i wanted to talk about um i wanted to talk about um the really cool shot of Newt in the water and then the alien rising up behind her. I think it's just such a cool. I, I'm I'm sad that you don't like stay on that shot a little longer because you cut like right out right away to like, you know, she's gone. But that whole thing, like, you know, the alien is going to do that. Like, you, you know, it's coming. Uh, you, you haven't seen this movie and you, you knew the alien was in the water, right? Absolutely. But like the shot and the tail rising, like, that was some cool shit. It was, it was, yeah. I um, I think for movie purposes though, you can't like stay on it too long, just to, like you can't celebrate your good shot. But yeah, I agree, it was cool. Um, there's also the cool shots like when, and I don't even remember when Ripley gets on the elevator to go down in the first part, but I guess she probably does. But she does like she, right away. She she walks up to the Bishop, and Bishop's like, "You got 14 minutes." And she's like, "Got it." And she goes over there, and she goes down the elevator. Okay, but for some reason the elevator didn't stay down. Maybe Bishop got out and was like, this will be funny, and presses both of them up. <laughs> um, but there's some cool shots. Like, the camera almost looks like a character, the way it kind of follows her around different poles and stuff. And then there's, like, 
some first person POV shots of her like running downstairs. Like there's definitely like some showy camera work in this part of it. Um, and then this is the start of kind of some other issues that I haven't brought up yet. So she uh, finds the tracker. Newt has apparently lost it. I don't know if the alien were like, well, let's take this off of her. This is a tracker. Throw it down. Um, but then Newt screams at the appropriate time. Um, Ripley goes over, grabs her, and then sees um, the most disgusting thing in the world. It reminded me of the slurm, uh, the slurm maker from Futurama, like the bug that just was squirting out like the clean bug. You can't be making Futurama references to a show I have seen very little of, but I, I, I assume that our audience has like a uh-huh. an elevated palette for high quality television shows such as Futurama, right? And that they'll get it. Oh, um, okay, that wasn't for me. I get it. I get it. Wasn't for you. Yeah, you go back to watching Bob's Burgers or something. So his first season then, was great. <laughs> I don't know. It probably is good. So then. Uh, the queen alien sees her and then she like calls in some lower level dudes and is like, Hey, get her. But then Ripley's like, Hey, this is, uh, this is a flamethrower and I'll kill your eggs. And the, the queen's like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. So, all right, all right, let's, let's play it cool. Right. Let's play cool. Back off guys. Everyone back (laughs) off. Give her a wide berth. And Ripley is presumably like kind of free. Right. And then she makes one of the stupidest decisions in both of these movies which is saying a lot for a movie that has a lot of stupid decisions because mm. these aliens are already going to die because a nuke is about to go off in five minutes. Right. And instead of letting that happen, she just starts burning all the eggs in front of the queen and then starts shooting people using up all of her ammo. Mm-hmm. And it's just for the audience because it looks cool and it's, it's more... Awesome. Yeah, that's right. But it's the only reason. It makes no sense for her to do it. No, of course not. But it's this it's this understanding where it's like, you took my daughter, so now I'm going to take all of your children away from you. Um, and I didn't even know about the scene with the daughter, like the actual daughter. But like the, the reason she was in cryo for so long and she missed her actual daughter's like life and death and everything like that is primarily the alien's fault, right? The, the first one from the first movie. So, like, she she has a ton of gripe with this thing, with this whole species. And, yes, I agree with you that it's like, yeah, it would have just blown up anyways. But it's like the final fuck you, right? It's like, you took all this away from me, your offsprings, or whatever it was, killed so many of my friends. This is for them. I'm going to just make you suffer and watch all your babies die. Um, and then, of course, the alien mother detaches herself from the egg sack, which is gross. Everything about that whole fucking thing is just gross. And then chases her down. Uh, and then we get to the stupid part about the elevator, but chases her down being like. Uh, like now it's a revenge movie, like the last 15 minutes of this whole movie is a revenge movie and I'm loving it. Um but yeah, then we already talked about how the elevator scene was stupid. And then Bishop was supposed to be there with the ship, but he had a circle back or whatever. Um, it's basically and- like when you drop off like, you know, a loved one at Publix or something and you just keep driving around until they come back out. You know, if it's like a quick run, you talk for a while, there's a lot going on. First of all, um, this isn't a visual medium, but I do appreciate you throwing up the double middle fingers <laughs> the whole time as you're describing it. When I'm like, the also, final fuck you, yeah. I also like um, that, you know, we've talked about the intelligence of these things, but the alien queen couldn't handle one of the eggs getting killed, right? Like, right. She threatened one egg and the alien queen was like, okay, stop. Even though you know, we've been told there's thousands of these things. The the one would have been too much for her. Um, also, where was this alien queen in the first movie? Like, Kane never saw this alien queen when he was, like, stepping on eggs and shit? She just wasn't there? No, you you haven't seen Prometheus, so you can't, you can't ask that question. I have question. seen Prometheus. I mean, you have, but you don't, don't remember Prometheus, and therefore you can't remember. ask that question. 
Yeah. Well, that's just retconning bullshit then. So there you go. I mean, that's that's a lot of people's complaints about Prometheus, honestly. Retconning bullshit. So me in, what, 2011 or whatever, when Prometheus came out, I was like, pretty good. And now, as an alien aliens enthusiast, I'm like, <laughs> fuck that retconning PC bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, we should actually watch it again. Um I'm not saying for this or, or together, but I'm, we should, since we've, we've watched all these alien movies, we should watch it again and, and try to get a little bit more context. Um, anyway, after so re- after resurrection um, or AVP, we got to do AVP. So, you know, definitely AVP uh, or no, I'm not even going to get into it. Um, so, uh, yeah. So Bishop circles back like you're at the fucking airport and he finally picks her up and um He's like, yeah, the, the ground was too unstable. I'm sorry about that. So they're getting away, and they actually make it all the way back to the to the facility, um, like the main base. And you think, well, they think everything's okay. We as the audience know that. I, I don't even know how. Like the, the mother queen is so fucking huge, but it made it onto like the back of the the back bottom of the uh, ship. Okay. You said there was no jump scares in this movie. And I'll tell you what. The fucking... The the minute where Ripley's like, you did good, Bishop. You did good. And he's like, a little smile on his face. And he's like, did I? Did I really do good? Fucking knife tail through this guy's, like, chest. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't care if you've seen this coming. I don't care if you've seen this movie a hundred times. That shot, that action just like makes you jump come on it, it, it shocked you right no, i mean I, th- I thought it was about to happen i thought no stop it they didn't show the alien as they were taking off i was like so that thing's clearly climbed on the ship right it's mo- but like when mo- is it coming off the ship like when's the introduction and the fact that it fucking lifts that thing the ai with his tail and just rips it in half and throws both halves to the opposite side of the rooms while like the white milky spew thing is like covering everyone. I'm like, it's amazing. It's amazing. It is. Um, but I definitely saw it coming. I guess you could say that is probably one of the only like sort of jump scare horror elements of it. Um, I like after this though, you know, she tells Newt to run. So Newt runs this like thing that basically goes in the floor underneath, which she, she didn't learn from last time when she got stuck underneath the floor that that's not great. Um, no, no, no. Then, it is a great. Nice. And then Ripley just leaves the room <laughs> and you're like, all right, so you just left her there. But then she comes back in, in the suit. Get away from her, you bitch. So, so great. Another great line to, yeah um this scene where it's like her in the suit i feel like has been a halloween costume it's been parodied it's been parodied on simpsons family guy fucking uh the show community it's been this is like the most iconic ripley has ever been um and i'm here for it and when she comes out and she calls that alien bitch a bitch um it's great i this is where it makes it up for the stupid elevator scene right this like this whole thing um it's kind of a recycle no you don't think so nothing can make up the fact that the alien although you know what all right hold on i guess maybe i can take it all back if they can cut the power and they can understand how to look for different entrances then maybe maybe they are smart enough to use an elevator i don't know all right. Maybe. All right. Maybe when they were, there's just the deleted scene of when they were setting up the the colony down there, they were like, "All right, this is how the elevator works, guys," and <laughs> just pressing buttons and shit. Um, the airlock thing being a recycled thing from the first movie, I was just like, "Okay, whatever." But uh, it's done in such a in such a better way than the first movie that I I was like, "Okay, it's it's taking some something old but making it new," you know. Oh, and the way that Bishop grabs Newt before she, like, gets thrown through, I was like, Bishop is my favorite character. Yeah, he's he is really good in this. I do love afterwards 
when uh, Newt runs up to Ripley and she's like, Mommy! And yeah. I'm like, that's totally like my name's Ray Skywalker vibes right there. <laughs> no, this is bringing the theme home. You know, you're at the end, the mother died of the aliens, and so the mother of the daughter that she lost is now the mother that she's gained. Like, just shut up and enjoy it. Mommy! I have shit a little bit on the ending of this because of the elevator. But I will say, I love how perfectly this actually ended where it sets up that there could be a sequel. It doesn't foreclose that possibility, but it also is such a satisfying ending that if you didn't do anything else, you would just be like, all right, that was perfectly ended. So, and that's not like the easiest thing to do as you can see in like a bunch of other series, but it's done really well here. Yeah, I mean, I I I have no complaints. You're the one with the complaints. So yeah, I mean, it's done really well here. I I uh, I think I you like this. Me. You were you were with me on the elevators. So don't even. I'm don't no, okay. Like, now. I, I was with you on the elevators, but I just thought like this honestly made up for it. I I I was like, it's a little weird the elevator thing, but um, but yeah, I think I think. I think the theme and the message in this movie is stronger than the first one. So overall, I think maybe like the character introduction of Ripley in the first one is so good and and how good of a character she is established in the first one is so good. But the overall story and arc in in Aliens, um, I like it a lot better. So that's my that's my take. Yeah, I mean, I think they're both great. I don't know. We have to watch three, Resurrection, Prometheus, Covenant, Alien vs. Predator, um, before we can really rank them, you know? Yeah. So. Freddy vs. Jason versus Alien versus Predator. Oh, and we have to watch uh, Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. Oh, you're forgetting Prometheus 2. That's Alien Covenant. It's not called Prometheus 2. Um, shows shows that I have never seen that one. <laughs> Could have guessed. Well, thanks, guys, for listening to another episode of I Finally Watched. I'm Alon. And this is David. And today, I finally watched Aliens. <laughs>